All right, uh, we're still waiting for that different type response from the Chinese on this trade war stuff. We find it interesting because at this late stage, normally, remember, on the first 50 billion in, uh, tariffs on, on Chinese goods was announced, they quickly replied and said, all right, here's 50 billion we have in your goods. That prompted the president said, all right, 200 billion. Um, and we respond to that, it's going to be another 200 billion. So we're still seeing what the Chinese are going to do. They don't like this, and they've made their grief known. And uh, a lot of folks the world over, including the head of Daimler, indicating, you know, this is going to have a worldwide effect. It could uh, crimp our profits. We could see a lot of our U.S. based facilities that sell cars, or they could be caught up in this. But even those facilities, like Volvo, for example, um, that aren't as big in that area, are fearing the same impact. That, in other words, this spreads far and wide. Uh, to Bryce Waterhouse, uh, Cooper's partner, Mitch Rochelle, and Margaret Watcher, Paul Schatz. Um, Paul, I'll end it with you, begin with you. What is your sense of where this is going and whether, when these auto companies start saying that, they're obviously worried this is escalating. And Neil, it, it somewhat reminds me uh, when Obama was president and we had the question mark around taxes, obviously much different issue, but it's kind of the same thing. It's the uncertainty that's the worst right. part, hopefully not the uh, end result. But I think this is all short-term nonsense. People are off guard. They don't know what to make of it. I think the, the administration is jockeying around, trying to cut the best deals. I still think short-term pain, long-term gain, this does not come to fruition, certainly not even close to as bad as advertised. What do you think? Um, a little bit agree, a little bit disagree. I think businesses plan for the long term. And when they're stuck for a year not being able to plan, and remember, we had a year of what's the story with tax reform and they couldn't plan. So over time, if they're not able to plan, they're not able to invest, it's going to have a longer term impact. So business owners, uh, we just had a whole bunch of inbound business owners together, CEOs. They really want to see something break on this so they can know how to move the business going forward. The president doesn't appear willing to give an inch on this and says we're, we're, we're the ones that have the strongest economy. We're coming from the position of strength. Uh, that could all just be jockeying, I understand. But what do you make of it? Trump digs himself into a, into a hole, gets right in the corner until the very last possible minute, and then all of a sudden he's 180 degrees right. on the other side. And I think it's the same thing here, whether it be tariffs with Canada or China or the EU or with cars. I think he's trying to cut the best deal, and his, his negotiating style is so much different than anyone's ever seen in a modern era, not only in the United States, but around the world. So it's really hard to kind of get your footing, both as, as an American investor as well as international. You don't know what to make of it. And I think in the end, when the, when the lights say slow down or it's going to impact companies, I think he backs off and cuts a much better deal than we're seeing now. Because if no one's going to win in a trade war. We may lose less, but everyone's going to lose. And I think when push comes to shove, given we've got elections in November as well as in two years hence from then, I think he's going to back off. I do not think this is going to be that bad because recession is the end result from all this. You know, um, you could argue, Mitch, that the president knows the Chinese have more to lose. They really do on paper and their markets have felt it. Um, they're in this precarious position. So he's kind of using that as leverage. The, yes, and he also has them as a partner in the whole North Korea situation. Let's not lose sight of that. But as to their not that this is helping there, although we don't know, right? We don't know. We're, we don't know. Quite right. But uh, their industrial production is at the lowest level in 22 years. Retail sales. This is in China, 15-year uh, low. And their pace of new business investment has slowed dramatically uh, year to date. So China has some economic problems locally. This isn't helping. And China's economic growth is something the entire world counts on uh, because everybody's trading with them. So that may be in our favor because having this resolve itself one way or the other. But what we're not talking about enough is probably the intellectual property uh, theft, right, if right. you will, and how that factors into all of it. I, I want to factor in, if you don't mind, Paul, his pivoting, uh, uh, maybe that is too strong a word, changing his mind, doing a 180 on the immigration thing. And, and signing this executive order to stop this practice of separating uh, kids from their parents along the border. The only reason why I mention in this context is he shows a sort of a pragmatism when it's called for. And I'm wondering whether that would be applied here or is it encouraging development to look at here? I think it's exactly right. And what he did with immigration somewhat kind of sort of epitomizes how he is so far on one side. And then you wake up the next day, someone gets thrown under the bus and right. we've got someone who's trying to make a deal. You cannot protect or tariff your way to prosperity. 
It's like you can't tax your way to prosperity. And I think in the end, he's got enough smart people, Larry Kudlow for sure, around him that... But he's also got some bomb throws. Peter Navarro would be in that camp. He does, but I still don't think my he has the seat at the big okay. boy table. And I, I really think in the end, he's going to see the path leads to recession. You can't have recession ahead of any big election. Markets are, are going to smell this out a lot faster than we see the actual numbers come out of the government. And I think in the end, again, the economy is going to may, may even pause for a second. But inevitably, I think markets are going to go much higher. And this is this is going to be a footnote. Yeah, they've even said that, you know, we've doubted him in the past and, and, and panicked in the past and, and things have been working out. OK, so we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt. What do you right, think? And I'll go back to the North Korea situation. Right. Everybody looked at the president and, what right. was, and the rhetoric of North Korea and said, we're in a virgin nuclear war. And the next thing you know, there's a photo op with the, the two leaders together. So uh, he certainly he said from on the campaign trail, I'm not going to telegraph anything. And he's certainly not telegraphing anything right now. So. So we don't, yeah, we don't know. We don't All know. right. Uh, thank you very, very much, guys.